The new allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip-hop mogul of sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. In the last few months, Sean Combs, popularly known as P. Diddy, has been in the spotlight for more reasons than one. From a line of lawsuits to allegations and speculations, social media is filled with stories about the music mogul. And at the top of the pile sits the incident of an alleged leaked tape with Meek Mill. In this video, I will be doing a deep dive into Diddy's most recent scandal to reveal what really happened with Meek Mill, sitting in a pile of lawsuits. In the world of music and entertainment, scandals and lawsuits are not uncommon. However, when a lawsuit involves two prominent figures like Lil Rod and P. Diddy, it becomes a sensational story that captures the attention of the public. Lil Rod filed a 73-page complaint that has sent shockwaves through the music industry, leaving everyone wondering what shocking revelations lie within its pages. Two names that have been speculatively brought up in connection with the complaint are Meek Mill and Usher. Although neither artist is accused of an outright crime in the suit, the redactions in the filing have sparked curiosity and fueled the rumor mill. Lil Rod has come forward with allegations against P. Diddy, accusing him of serious illegal activities. These allegations include sexual harassment, drugging, and threats that Lil Rod claims to have endured during his time with P. Diddy. Seeing how it's 73 pages long, it's no surprise that Lil Rod's complaint is a meticulously detailed account of the events that transpired between him and P. Diddy. It is said to include evidence, such as video and audio recordings, that capture the alleged illegal activities. Lil Rod has bravely decided to speak out, seeking justice for the harm he claims to have suffered. As news of the lawsuit spreads, headlines scream with shock and disbelief. The music industry is left reeling, unsure of how this scandal will impact the careers of Lil Rod, P. Diddy, and others involved. The outcome of this lawsuit could have far-reaching implications for the artists involved and the industry as a whole. It's important to note that Lil Rod and P. Diddy have collaborated in the past, making this lawsuit all the more shocking. Fans and industry insiders are left wondering how these allegations could have gone unnoticed for so long. To fully understand where Meek Mill fits into all of these, one must take a closer look at some of the specific allegations outlined in the lawsuit. Lil Rod claims that he was forced to procure sex workers for P. Diddy and engage in unwelcome sexual acts with them and others. These acts were allegedly demanded by P. Diddy himself, who exerted his power and influence to intimidate Lil Rod into compliance. The lawsuit includes screenshots from gatherings hosted at P. Diddy's homes, which allegedly involved underage girls and sex workers. These screenshots paint a disturbing picture of the environment that Lil Rod claims to have been exposed to. It is alleged that P. Diddy provided laced alcoholic beverages to the attendees, further implicating him in illegal activities. P. Diddy's lawyer wasted no time in responding to the allegations, vehemently denying any wrongdoing on his client's part. He stated that the allegations were baseless and without merit. P. Diddy categorically denies the claims made by Lil Rod, claiming that they have overwhelming evidence that proves Lil Rod's allegations are complete lies. He also said that their attempts to share this evidence with Lil Rod's attorney had been ignored as they refused to engage in a meaningful dialogue. While Lil Rod's lawsuit is against P. Diddy, he is not the only one who was dragged into the situation. The lawsuit claims that P. Diddy engaged in sexual intercourse with some individuals whose names have been redacted names. Since the release of the lawsuit, people have speculated that the redacted names on the suit are none other than fellow musicians Meek Mill and Usher. Meek Mill's name came up because one part of the lawsuit stated that one of the redacted names is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Meek Mill is in fact from Philadelphia, and he did date Nicki Minaj for two years. The other redacted name mentioned in the lawsuit is described as an R&B singer who performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Usher has been linked to this description because he recently played the Super Bowl and had a residency in Las Vegas. Although these speculations are widely known on the internet, Usher has remained utterly quiet while Meek Mill has not released an official statement, even though he took to social media to defend his integrity. In the recent past, Meek Mill has found himself at the center of a storm of controversy, as rumors and speculation about his sexuality have taken the internet by storm. From his close friendship with billionaire Michael Rubin to leaked graphic texts and a viral sus photo, the online community has been buzzing with theories and gossip. Philadelphia rapper Meek Mill first found himself in the spotlight when his close friendship with billionaire Michael Rubin came under intense scrutiny. It all started when Meek was invited to Michael's extravagant Hamptons party. The two were seen hugging and getting very comfortable with each other, which immediately caught the attention of onlookers and social media users. 
advisors. Their friendship sparked the question of whether or not they were more than just friends. The closeness and frequent displays of affection between Meek and Michael raised eyebrows and led to a flurry of online discussions. As the rumors continued to swirl, a viral photo of a man who bore a striking resemblance to Meek Mill surfaced on the internet. The photo, which showed the man lying on his back with his legs spread, quickly spread like wildfire, causing a frenzy among fans and critics alike. People began questioning whether the photo was indeed of Meek and what it meant for his relationship with Michael Rubin. Twitter became a breeding ground for speculation, with users sharing their thoughts and theories about the viral photo. Some suggested that Meek's close friendship with Michael was more than just platonic, while others dismissed it as a mere coincidence. The internet was abuzz with discussions about Meek's sexuality, and the controversy surrounding him continued to grow. In response to the viral photo, Meek Mill was forced to address the rumors head on. He took to social media to deny any romantic involvement with Michael Rubin, stating that they were simply close friends. Meek emphasized that there was nothing more to their relationship and urged people not to jump to conclusions based on a single photo. As the controversy surrounding Meek Mill's alleged gay accusations continued to gain momentum, a male OnlyFans creator stepped forward with shocking claims. This creator, whose identity remains undisclosed, claimed to have been in an intimate relationship with Meek Mill, who he referred to as his fave female rapper X. While the creator did not reveal their name, their tweet quickly went viral. According to the creator's tweet, they had explicit evidence in the form of a video involving Meek Mill. The content creator alleged that they had received permission from the rapper to not just perform sexual acts on him, but also to record the encounter. These claims, although they are yet to be confirmed, further fueled the speculation. Surrounding Meek's sexuality, Meek Mill, for his part, has not directly addressed the claims made by the male OnlyFans creator. It's unclear whether he is aware of the allegations or if he has chosen to remain silent on the matter. Meek Mill's past controversies and speculations of being gay may have fueled the speculations of him being one of the redacted names on Lil Rod's lawsuit against P. Diddy. Although Lil Rod's allegations against Diddy is the most recent one in the litany accusations that have been leveled against P. Diddy, it is definitely not the only mind-boggling one. In November 2023, P. Diddy ex-girlfriend Cassie filed a lawsuit against him accusing Diddy of raping and abusing her over the course of their relationship which lasted from 2008 till 2018. Cassie, a talented singer and actress, burst onto the music scene in the early 2000s with her hit songs and captivating performances. But behind the scenes, her life took a dark turn when she crossed paths with Sean Diddy Combs, a music mogul and one of the most influential figures in the entertainment industry. It all began when Cassie, then just 19 years old, caught the attention of Diddy. He was instantly captivated by her talent and beauty, and he wasted no time in signing her to his label, Bad Boy Records. What seemed like a dream come true quickly turned into a nightmare for Cassie. As Cassie's career soared under Combs' guidance, she found herself entangled in a web of control and abuse. According to court documents, Combs allegedly lured her into an ostentatious, fast-paced, and drug-fueled lifestyle. But behind the glitz and glamour, there was a darker side to their relationship. Cassie claims that Combs, nearly two decades her senior, became a vicious, cruel, and controlling man. She alleges that he used his power and influence to manipulate and dominate her, both professionally and personally. The abuse, she says, was relentless. In the court filings, Cassie details the horrifying incidents she endured at the hands of Combs. She alleges that he physically assaulted her, leaving her with bruises, burst lips, and black eyes. The violence escalated to the point where she feared for her life. Cassie claimed that Combs raped her in her own home after she tried to leave him. She also accused him of forcing her to engage in sexual acts with male sex workers while he watched and filmed the encounters. The level of control and manipulation alleged by Cassie left the world in a shock. As Cassie's relationship with P. Diddy progressed, so did the intensity of the abuse. According to court documents, she claims that he not only physically assaulted her, but also subjected her to emotional manipulation and control. The toll it took on her was immeasurable. Cassie reveals that she lived in constant fear, never knowing when the next outburst of violence would occur. The emotional scars ran deep, leaving her feeling trapped and isolated. She sought solace in therapy desperately trying to make sense of the chaos that had become her life. She alleged that P. Diddy's actions not only caused physical harm, but also left her emotionally scarred, struggling to regain her sense of self-worth and rebuild her life. P. Diddy, represented by attorney Ben Braffman, vehemently denies the allegations made against him. He claimed Cassie's lawsuit as an attempt to tarnish his reputation and extort money from him. In a shocking turn of events, a day after Cassie filed her lawsuit, P. Diddy announced that they had resolved the lawsuit amicably to their mutual satisfaction. Cassie also made a statement confirming P. 
P. Diddy's announcement. She also thanked her family, lawyers, and fans for their support. While the lawsuit was immediately resolved, there were those who took the opportunity to call out P. Diddy for various reasons. One of the most prominent people being 50 Cent, who took to social media to troll Diddy and once again put his sexuality under the microscope. It all started with a single Instagram post that sent shockwaves through the music industry. 50 Cent shared a video that captured a moment of controversy during a concert. The clip showed Diddy patting Jay-Z's butt, raising eyebrows and sparking speculation about their relationship. This trolling session was part of a two-week-long campaign by 50 Cent, who has been relentless in his pursuit of exposing Diddy. As soon as the news of the lawsuit filed by Cassie reached social media, 50 Cent seized the opportunity to take shots at Diddy. His Instagram posts became a platform for him to express his disdain and skepticism towards the music mogul. And in one particular post, he not only targeted Diddy, but also caught T.I., who headlined the same concert in the crossfire. But what exactly are the accusations that 50 Cent has made against Diddy? According to his posts, he suggests that Diddy's relationships with Jay-Z and other prominent figures in the industry are not what they seem. These shocking allegations have left fans and the music community in disbelief. According to 50 Cent's posts, there have been whispers and rumors about a romantic connection between Diddy and Jay-Z. While neither Diddy or Jay-Z have publicly addressed these rumors, the speculation has fueled intense speculation and curiosity among fans and the media alike. But it doesn't stop there. 50 Cent's posts also allude to Diddy's alleged involvement with other influential figures in the music world. While the details remain murky, the implications are staggering. These claims suggest a web of secret relationships and hidden desires within the industry. While 50 Cent's troll posts were still circulating the media, Cat Williams, the comedian, spoke up about P. Diddy and made his own allegations. Cat Williams recently sat down with Shannon Sharp on the Club Shay Shay podcast, where he fearlessly spoke his mind and set the record straight on a few things. Among his bold claims, Williams accused Cedric the Entertainer of stealing his very best joke in the 90s. However, it was his candid statements about Diddy's partying tendencies that truly captured attention. According to Cat Williams, P. Diddy has a penchant for partying and indulging in a lifestyle that Williams found problematic. Williams candidly spoke about his experiences with Diddy and the need to say no to his party invitations. Williams's assertion that he got the receipts adds a layer of authenticity to his claims, suggesting that there is tangible evidence to support his allegations. The last few weeks have been intense for P. Diddy, as his reputation and name have been dragged through the mud by more than one person. Although he has denied some of the allegations against him, he has remained quiet to the others, including those made by 50 Cent and Cat Williams. Damaged reputations and fighting back. Before delving into the current state of things and how the two stars are fighting tooth and nail to preserve their reputations, it's important to look at what is at stake. In the bustling streets of Harlem, New York City on November 4th, 1969, a star was born. Sean John Combs, later known as P. Diddy, entered the world with a fire in his eyes and a passion for music that would shape his destiny. Growing up in a modest household, Combs is the son of Janice and Melvin Combs. His mother worked as a model and teacher's assistant, while his father served as a U.S. Air Force veteran and an associate of Frank. Lucas, a notorious drug dealer. Despite his father's involvement in the criminal underworld, Combs was determined to carve his own path and rise above the circumstances that surrounded him. However, tragedy struck when Combs was just two years old. His father, Melvin, was shot and killed in a drug-related incident, leaving a void in his young life. Despite the absence of his father, Janice, his mother was able to raise him well. Janice instilled in Combs the importance of education and hard work. She encouraged him to pursue his dreams and provided unwavering support throughout his journey. Combs' determination and resilience were evident from an early age as he excelled academically and showed a natural talent for entrepreneurship. From a young age, Combs displayed an innate talent for music. He was heavily influenced by the sounds of the vibrant Harlem music scene, where he would often attend block parties and local performances. It was during these formative years that Combs developed a deep appreciation for the art form and a burning desire to make his mark in the industry. As Combs entered his teenage years, he attended the prestigious Mount St. Michael Academy, a Catholic school in the Bronx. He spent countless hours honing his skills as a rapper and producer. Combs' dedication and talent caught the attention of Andre Harrell, the founder of Uptown Records, who recognized his potential and offered him a position as a talent director. This opportunity at Uptown Records marked a turning point in Combs' life. He immersed himself in the music industry, working tirelessly to scout and develop new talent. Combs played a pivotal role in the success of artists such as Jodeci and Mary J. Blige, showcasing his keen eye for talent and his ability to shape the sound of the era. Despite his growing success, 
success at Uptown Records, Combs yearned for something more. He had a vision of creating his own record label, one that would revolutionize the industry and give a platform to artists who were often overlooked. In 1993, Combs took a leap of faith and founded Bad Boy Records, a label that would go on to become synonymous with groundbreaking music and cultural influence. With Bad Boy Records, Combs unleashed a wave of talent onto the music scene. He discovered and nurtured artists such as the notorious Big, Faith Evans, and 112, propelling them to superstardom. Combs' unique blend of business acumen and artistic vision transformed Bad Boy Records into a powerhouse, solidifying his status as a music mogul. P. Diddy's immense talent and contributions to the music industry have not gone unnoticed. Throughout his career, he has been honored with numerous awards and accolades, solidifying his status as one of the most influential figures in the entertainment world. Combs' first taste of major recognition came in 1998, when he won his first Grammy Award for his collaboration with Faith Evans and 112 on the iconic tribute song, I'll Be Missing You. The track, which paid homage to the late Notorious Big, struck a chord with audiences worldwide and became an anthem of remembrance. The Grammy win was a testament to Combs' ability to create music that resonated with people on a deep emotional level. In the years that followed, P. Diddy continued to dominate award shows and receive critical acclaim for his work. His sophomore album, No Way Out, earned him three Grammy Awards, including Best Rap Album, Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group, and Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal. These wins solidified Combs' position as a force to be reckoned with in the rap and hip-hop genres. Beyond the Grammy Awards, P. Diddy has also been recognized by other prestigious institutions. He has received two MTV Video Music Awards, including Best Rap Video for Mo Money Mo Problems and Best R&B Video for I Need a Girl Part 1. These wins showcased Combs' versatility as an artist and his ability to transcend genres. P. Diddy's career, however successful, has not been without its fair share of legal issues and controversies. Throughout the years, he has faced numerous challenges that have tested his resilience and reputation. One of the most notable incidents in P. Diddy's life was the 1999 nightclub shooting incident. It was a night that would forever change the trajectory of his career. The incident occurred at Club New York in Manhattan, where a dispute between Combs' entourage and another group escalated into a shooting. Combs, along with his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and his protege Shine, were arrested and charged in connection with the incident. The highly publicized trial that followed captivated the media and the public's attention. P. Diddy maintained his innocence throughout the proceedings, and after a lengthy trial, he was ultimately acquitted of all charges. However, the incident had a lasting impact on his personal and professional life, leading to the end of his relationship with Jennifer Lopez and a tarnished public image. In addition to the nightclub shooting incident, P. Diddy has faced other legal issues throughout his career. He has been arrested for driving with a suspended license and has faced allegations of sexual misconduct. These incidents have brought negative attention to Combs and have tested his ability to navigate through the legal system. Furthermore, P. Diddy has been involved in various lawsuits, both as a plaintiff and a defendant. One notable lawsuit was against the new owners of his clothing brand, Sean John. Combs claimed that the new owners had violated the terms of their agreement, leading to a legal battle over the rights to the brand. Another lawsuit involved Spirits Company Diageo, with Combs alleging that they had breached their contract regarding his involvement with the T-Rock vodka brand. These legal battles have not only affected P. Diddy's personal life, but also his business ventures. In November 2023, Macy's decided to discontinue his clothing line, Sean John, following the allegations of sexual misconduct against Combs. The controversy surrounding these allegations led to a loss of partnerships and a tarnished reputation. In addition to the legal issues, P. Diddy has faced backlash and criticism from the public and the media. The allegations of sexual misconduct in particular have had a significant impact on his career. In response to the allegations, Combs stepped down as chairman of Revolt TV, a television network he co-founded in an effort to distance himself from the controversy. It is obvious that P. Diddy has had his fair share of lawsuits during the span of his career. Regardless, he has managed to remain relevant in the music industry. However, that may not be the case for Meek Mill, who has now been accused of being one of Diddy's sexual partners. Meek Mill, whose real name is Robert Rymeek Williams, was born on May 6, 1987, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His early life was marked by adversity and challenges that would shape his journey to becoming one of the most influential figures in the rap industry. Growing up in North Philadelphia, Meek Mill was exposed to the harsh realities of inner city life from a young age. The neighborhood he called home was plagued by poverty, violence, and drugs, creating a challenging environment for a young boy to navigate. Meek Mill's parents, Kathy Williams and an absent father, did their best to provide for him, but the circumstances were far from ideal. 
Meek Mill's childhood was far from ordinary. He witnessed the struggles of his community firsthand, with poverty and violence becoming a part of his daily life. The streets of North Philadelphia were unforgiving, but they also served as the backdrop for Meek Mill's journey into the world of rap. As a young boy, Meek Mill found solace in music. He was drawn to the power of words and the ability of music to convey emotions and tell stories. It was through music that he began to express himself and find his voice in a world that often silenced the voices of the marginalized. However, Meek Mill's passion for music was was not without its challenges. The streets that he called home were not always supportive of his dreams. One of the defining moments in Meek Mill's early life was his introduction to battle rap, a form of competitive rapping where artists engage in lyrical warfare, became a platform for Meek Mill to showcase his talent and gain recognition. He would participate in rap battles on the streets of Philadelphia, honing his skills and gaining respect from his peers. Meek Mill and three other friends worked together to form a local rap group they called the Bloodhounds. They recognized his potential and invited him to join their ranks. This marked a significant turning point in Meek Mill's life as he now had a platform to showcase his talent to a wider audience. The Bloodhounds provided Meek Mill with the opportunity to collaborate with other talented artists and further develop his skills as a rapper. It was during this time that he began to cultivate his unique style, blending his personal experiences with the realities of the streets. Despite the recognition he was gaining within the local rap scene, Meek Mill's journey was far from smooth. He faced numerous setbacks and challenges along the way. The streets that had once inspired him now threatened to consume him. Meek Mill found himself entangled in the cycle of violence and crime that plagued his neighborhood. As Meek Mill's reputation grew, so did his aspirations. He knew that in order to achieve his dreams, he would have to make a name for himself beyond the streets of Philadelphia. This drive led him to sign with Grand Hustle Records in 2008. A label founded by rapper T.I. signing with Grand Hustle Records was a significant milestone for Meek Mill. It represented a validation of his talent and a stepping stone towards greater opportunities. However, his time with the label would be short-lived as he he eventually left and signed with Maybach Music Group in 2011. Meek Mill's decision to join Maybach Music Group would prove to be a pivotal moment in his career. The label, founded by rapper Rick Ross, provided Meek Mill with the platform and resources he needed to take his music to the next level. It was under Maybach Music Group that Meek Mill would gain mainstream recognition and solidify his place in the rap industry. After signing with Maybach Music Group in 2011, Meek Mill wasted no time in making his mark on the rap industry. His energetic flow, raw lyrics, and captivating story storytelling abilities quickly caught the attention of both critics and fans alike. One of the defining moments in Meek Mill's rise to fame was his performance on Maybach Music Group's compilation album, Self Made Vol 1, released in 2011. The album featured a collection of tracks from the label's roster, including Meek Mill. His contributions to the album, particularly his songs Tupac Back and Ema Boss, became instant hits and solidified his place in the rap game. Tupac Back and Ema Boss not only showcased Meek Mill's lyrical prowess, but also introduced his unique style to a wider audience. These songs, with their hard-hitting beats and powerful delivery, resonated with listeners and quickly climbed the charts. Both tracks entered the Billboard Hot 100, marking a significant milestone in Meek Mill's career. One of the notable controversies involved a boycott called by a pastor due to the lyrical content of Meek Mill's song Amen. The pastor argued that the song was disrespectful to religious sentiments and called for a boycott of Meek Mill's music. However, Meek Mill defended his music, stating that rap music reflects real life and that he was simply expressing his own experiences and perspectives. Meek Mill's rise to fame was not without its fair share of controversies and feuds. Throughout his career, he has been involved in high-profile disputes with other rappers, including Cassidy, Drake, The Game, Beanie Siegel, and 6 i 9 e These feuds have garnered significant media attention and added to Meek Mill's reputation as a controversial figure in the rap industry. Some of these feuds have been resolved over time, while others continue to simmer. Despite the controversies, Meek Mill has remained committed to his music and his mission to create impactful art. He has used his platform to shed light on social issues, including police brutality, systemic racism, and the struggles faced by marginalized communities. His music serves as a form of protest and a call for change. However, with the recent happenings and speculations about his sexuality, Meek Mill recently took to X, formerly known as Twitter, to unleash a scathing rant aimed primarily at DJ academics, who had called him out and urged him to address the allegations surrounding his involvement in the Lil Rod lawsuit. In a series of tweets, Meek Mill vehemently denied the accusations and provided a fiery explanation as to why no man would ever approach him about gay activity. Meek Mill declared, I'm from Philly. I don't do coke. Nobody won't even offer me coke because I'm that heavy. No man or what would ever approach me about gay activity, and the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming, lol. With these words, Meek Mill not only defended his reputation, but also showcased his pride in his hometown of Philadelphia. The controversy surrounding the Lil Rod lawsuit only intensified as social media 
media personalities such as DJ Academics and Andrew Tate publicly weighed in on the matter, further fueling the fire. But Meek Mill didn't stop at his initial denial. In a follow-up tweet, he emphasized his cautious approach to industry interactions, stating that he always surrounds himself with his trusted friends to avoid any potential misunderstandings or false accusations. According to Meek Mill, he never engages in one-on-one -on -one conversations with individuals from the industry, ensuring that his friends are always present to witness and intervene if necessary. This strategy, he claims, has been his shield against any misconceptions or false rumors. It is important to note that as of now, most of these allegations are nothing more than speculation that have not been verified. Whatever the case, social media remains attentive to the new updates about the lawsuit. Check out this next video to learn more about the secret escapades of influential celebrities.